Hello, my name is Bronte Holt and I'm an Advanced Endoscopy Fellow at Florida Hospital Orlando. On behalf of my co-authors from Westmead Hospital in Sydney, Australia, I'm going to be discussing the results of our research study to be published in Gastrointestinal Endoscopy entitled Advanced Mucosal Neoplasia at the Anal Rectal Junction, Endoscopic Resection Techniques and Outcomes. In this study, we recorded the clinical features, resection technique and outcomes in patients undergoing endoscopic mucosal resection of advanced mucosal neoplasia involving the anorectal junction and rectum. Procedural success and safety was compared between the resections at the two locations. The endoscopic mucosal resection, or EMR, technique was modified for anorectal junction lesions, and this will be discussed shortly. The main finding of our study was that EMR at the anal rectal junction had a similar procedural success, adenoma recurrence and admission rate compared to the proximal rectum. We conclude that with some modification to the EMR technique, safe and effective treatment of adenomas involving the anal rectal junction can be performed on an outpatient basis and should be considered as first line management when the risk for invasive disease is low. Adenomas involving the very distal rectum and anal rectal junction are uncommon. Whilst EMR has been shown to be safe and effective for advanced mucosal neoplasia of the colorectum, a preferred or ideal EMR strategy for distal rectal lesions has not been defined. Endoscopic resection at the anorectal junction is technically challenging because of the region's distinctive anatomic and physiologic characteristics. Endoscopic access is often restricted and visualisation may be poor. The unique innovation with somatic sensory nerve supply around the dentate line necessitates anaesthesia to limit pain. The unique lymphovascular supply requires specific measures to limit bleeding from resecting over hemorrhoidal vessels. There is also the theoretic risk of systemic bacteremia because of direct drainage of this region into the systemic circulation. Thus, the threshold to defer to inpatient care, surgical management and general anaesthesia may be decreased because of clinical concern about safety, procedural complexity and efficacy. Our centre performs a large volume of colorectal EMR and made it ideally suited to perform a prospective evaluation of the clinical features and procedural techniques used for successful resection at the anorectal junction. The EMR technique used for advanced mucosal neoplasia at the anorectal junction is modified specifically for the region's distinctive characteristics. I will now discuss the approach. Careful digital and endoscopic assessment is essential. Digital palpation of the adenoma can yield useful information about the lesion's mobility, with a fixed or immobile lesion raising concerns for invasive disease. Endoscopic inspection in the forward view from within the anal canal and in retroflexion in the rectum shows a degree of involvement of the dentate line and the circumferential and proximal extent of the lesion. However extensive the lesion, if there are no features of invasive disease, Successful EMR can be achieved in the majority of patients. Lesion access and positioning can be optimised by utilising a transparent cap to deflect the mucosal folds. Lesion exposure may be further improved by changing the patient's position to use the effect of gravity on the rectal mucosa and fluid pools, orientating the lesion in line with the colonoscopy working channel. Changing to a gastroscope with its shorter bending section with a narrower radius of 180 degrees angulation can enhance access to the lesion and improve precision of snare placement. This is particularly useful when in retroflexion. Advanced mucosal neoplasia overlying hemorrhoidal columns can be safely resected by EMR with a low risk of bleeding. Tangential submucosal injection in the forward view is performed with the scope at the dentate line and injection directly into vessels avoided. The injection commences as the needle is inserted and rapid mucosal lift confirms correct placement. The injection lifts the mucosa away from the hemorrhoidal columns, which are usually located in the deep submucosal layer, reducing the risk of vessel entrapment with snare closure. Prophylactic antibiotics should be considered for lesions with an increased risk of direct systemic bacterial translocation, particularly distal rectal lesions larger than 40 mm with a rich vascular network within the EMR defect or multiple exposed hemorrhoid vessels. Routine antibiotic prophylaxis is not currently recommended for colonic EMR. However, the distal rectum is relatively unprotected by the reticular endothelial function of the portal lymphovenous drainage system and may increase the risk of symptomatic systemic bacteremia. Before we initiated this approach, 
we have seen rigors at the completion of an otherwise uncomplicated distal rectal EMR. A long-acting local anaesthetic such as rupivacaine or bupivacaine is added to the submucosal injectate for the distal injections. The dose is capped at 40 mg and patients require intraprocedural cardiac monitoring. Painless resection over the dentate line can then be performed. Anesthesia is provided for 4 hours and analgesia for at least 12 hours. Our standard post-EMR protocol is for patients to remain nil by mouth for 4 hours, then be discharged on clear fluids after medical review. Normal diet is recommenced the following day. Patients who undergo EMR at the anorectal junction are additionally advised to maintain soft stools for one to two weeks and to take oral acetaminophen if required. Careful follow-up is required at four months to ensure complete adenoma clearance has been achieved. If residual or recurrent adenoma is seen at this point, it is typically small and unifocal and readily amenable to endoscopic treatment. In summary, Simple modification of the EMR technique allows safe and effective treatment of advanced mucosal neoplasia at the anorectal junction on an outpatient basis, even when disease is extensive or the dentate line is involved. We conclude that EMR should be considered as first-line therapy in the absence of invasive disease.